So this is gonna be the first video in a multi-video series I'm gonna do on how I am going to take this deep water well pump and power it directly from solar and battery storage. So a few beginners out there, here is the basic diagram of how a solar system works. I figured you better know this in order to get a better understanding of the rest of the conversation we'll be having here on this project. So in a nutshell, you've got the sun, the solar panels collect that light, turn that sunlight into usable electricity via direct current or DC power. It sends that power over to an inverter or and charge controller, which a lot of these now are all in ones, which I like because it simplifies the install. This inverter takes that DC power, converts it to AC. Well, it does a few things. One, it takes that DC power, it can send it right into your batteries for storage to use at night. And it can take that power and convert it or invert it to AC power, send that power to your electrical panel at your house, which powers your house or whatever loads. For instance, for me, it's going to be the well. That in a nutshell is how a solar system works. So just wanted to show you that before we get into the rest of this conversation. Now this well pump is about 465 feet deep. It's two horsepower and it's 240 volts. So right off the bat, that's what you're going to want to know. You're going to want to find the specs of your well pump. So you should be able to find some of those specs on the inside kind of the power box or where the, uh, the transformer is. You can see it kind of opened up right there where those yellow, red, and white wires are. There's a contactor there. Inside that cover, I found some of the specs I needed. Now, but I wanna be really specific when it comes to the surge rating. So right when that well pump turns on, there's a giant surge that's pulled of electricity. I wanna know exactly what that surge is so I can size my solar inverter to be able to handle that surge. And I also wanna know the running watts as well so I can make sure I have a big enough battery bank or a large enough solar array to be able to power this thing. So in order to get those specs, the surge rating and the running watts, I bought this multimeter on Amazon. I'll link to the one I bought specifically, but it has an inrush setting. So you may have one of these, a cheaper one, but it doesn't have an inrush setting. That's where you're gonna be able to get that surge, know exactly what that surge is. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it right now. And you can also use this thing to get the running watts as well. So before we can pick out the equipment we need, we need to find out that inrush surge in amps and also the running wattage. So let's go get those right now. So right now this well pump is being powered by the grid. So this double pole 30 amp breaker is the deep water well pump that you see right here. So this is what we need to get a surge rate on. Now you just pull one of the legs, you can see it's 240 volts. So it's got two. Now I'm gonna put my clamp meter right here around that wire and then I'll let it hang for now and I need to put this into amps so I'm going to turn it to the 600 amp setting because I know it's not going to be over that and I'm going to want to change it to the inrush function so if I hit this function button it says AC all right it says inrush there we go now we are all set to go ahead and turn this breaker on. And then once we turn that on, we'll be able to see how high that surge is. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, the well pump turned on, I heard it. So there we go, 35.46 amps at 240 volts. That is our inrush rating. So we have to find an inverter that can at least do that. And in fact, I'd rather go bigger. So I'm gonna wanna find one that does 50 amps just to have a little bit of uh, wiggle room there. Now let's do a running amp calculation. So I'll change the function to AC amps, and we'll see what we're running right now. All right, 7.3 amps. Now that's just on one leg. So remember, that's on, gonna be on two different legs. It's gonna be pulling about the same thing. So 7.3 amps times 230 or 240 volts, because that's what this system is. That's gonna be our running wattage. So if I take that 7.3 amps, multiply it by 240 volts, which is what this system is, or this well pump is, that comes to just under 1800 running watts. So there we go, we have the specs we need. We need at least a surge of 36 amps and an inverter that can handle at least 1800 running watts. Now I'd rather go a lot bigger than that. Again, I would, I'd like to have wiggle room, be able to power some other stuff if I wanted to off that thing. So that is how you find out or get the specs for the exact size inverter you're gonna need for your well pump.
All right, so based on the specs we just got, I am gonna go with the EG4 6000 XP inverter. That inverter does 240 volts split phase, so it's perfect for what this well pump needs. It can surge to 50 amps, which gives me a lot of leeway over that 36 amp surge, which is what we got the reading on. And it can run 6,000 watts. So the 6,000 XP, hence its name, it can run 6,000 watts continuous. And the wattage for this well pump, as you saw, is about a little under 1,800 watts. So that gives us plenty of room to add any additional things we'd like to on this inverter if we wanted to. And the 6000 XP inverter right now is running like $1,399. So it's at an unreal inexpensive price for what you're getting with that inverter. So it was a no brainer to go ahead and get that. And I'll have a link in the description to all the materials I'm using in this video, including the 6000 XP, including the solar panels I'm using, including the battery I'm gonna use. Now the battery I'm going with is gonna be the EG4 indoor wall mount battery. It's gonna be just over 14 kilowatt hours, which should be plenty because when my well's running, I think it runs about seven kilowatt hours a day total. Now that's gonna be different for everybody. So how my water system works is water gets pumped out of this deep water well. It flows into these, I've got three of these big 3000 gallon tanks, and then it flows from there into a pressure pump right here that pressurizes the water to be sent out to the five homes I have on my acreage I live on here. So we do have five homes, which is why I have that pressure pump, that water pressure pump. Most of you probably don't have that. You probably just have a deep water well pump and it feeds a bladder tank, it pressurizes the bladder tank, and then you're, as you use water inside your house, the pump turns on and pressurizes that tank. That's the way I'm going to stick with the videos on this project because most of you probably have that type of system and not this pressure pump here, even though the system I am installing with the 6000 XP inverter from EG4 and that 14.3 kilowatt hour indoor wall mount battery is gonna be enough to power this pump as well because that runs on about 2000 watts um, and it's a variable speed. So it will handle it, but I'm really gonna leave that out because that's again, not what most of you probably have. But the inverter and the battery need to be in an enclosed area so it's dry. So as you can see, I'm exposed to the elements here. We are gonna pour a little curb right here and build a pump house so it will be dry inside there. I'm not gonna show much of that, but that is part of the project we're doing right now. So now that you know how this system works, let's go ahead and get into how I'm going to be doing the solar panel array for this project. So let's go over how I'm going to connect my solar panels to the 6000 XP for this project. I am going to do two rows of six panels six panels here and six panels here and each of these rows are going to be on one of the charge controllers so you can see when my wires go up into the 6000 xp into the positive and negative and then same thing on the other string here it is also going to go onto the second charge controller on the 6000 xp now to do this one thing you have to know is you have to know the series calculation so i am connecting these in series so what does that mean for you beginners so what that means is I've got my panel here, the positive wires on this side, the negatives on this side. I'm going to move this negative and connect it to this positive. And then same thing, negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive. And then I'm gonna take that negative on the end and bring that all the way back around into the charge controller and taking this first positive line into the charge controller. That is what we call a series connection. So what happens on that is the volts increase the amps stay the same. So for these panels, the max voltage, the VOC is 49.05. So you're gonna take that 49.05, multiply it by six, because there's six panels here and I'm in a series connection. So what that looks like is my first array, six panels times 49.05 is 294 volts at 11.6 amps. So each panel is a max, the short circuit max amps is 11.6. So you can find this on the solar panel, on the sticker on the back, or on the spec sheet um, from the manufacturer that you're buying from. So then I need to make sure that this matches the specs for the 6000 XP. So again, my volts are 294 volts for each string here. For the top array, 294 volts, and for the bottom array, 294 volts, each going to separate charge controllers, since there is two charge controllers on the 6000 XP. The 6000 XP allows 17 amp max into each charge controller. Well, no problem, right? I'm at 11.6 amps. 
because I'm in a series connection, so the amps stay the same. So I'm good there. Now I'll check the voltage. Now the operating voltage range on the 6000 XP is 120 volts to 385 volts. You'd like to stay, I would say, over 220, 230, even a little higher if you can, to try to get that max amount of volts early in the morning. And I'm at 294 volts, so I think that is about perfect for this. So I'm also good there. Now the max volts you can put on this, on each charge controller for the 6000 XP is 480 volts. So I'm nowhere near that. Now there is something to keep in mind. There's something called the temperature coefficient of solar panels. And what that means is, even though this says 49.05, in the event of really cold weather, it can go above that. Now by how much, that's where this temperature coefficient calculation comes in. Now I'm not even close to my max at 480 volts here, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But if you are getting close to the max operating voltage, then you should run that calculation and you can find that. Um, should be on the spec sheet, what the temperature coefficient is, and there's a calculation. Check out temperature coefficient solar panel calculations on YouTube and you'll see a bunch of people have videos on that. Now that's if you're in a very cold location and you're close to that max operating voltage or the max charge control range. I would not want to go anywhere near this 480 volts, me personally. Um, that is how you damage your equipment and I don't want to have to replace equipment. That is expensive. So I'd stay away from getting anywhere near this 480. I think right around where I'm at, 294, 250 to 300 volts, that's about perfect. And my second array is exactly the same. So it's very simple calculations going to the charge controller. Um, the max solar input on the 6000 XP is 10,000 watts or 5,000 each charge controller. Now that's the max solar input, but it can only use 4,000 watts on each charge controller or 8,000 watts total. That's the max usable for the 6000 XP. And that should be a perfect size, I think, for, for being able to power my well pump, my deep water well pump here. So that is a general rundown of how the solar panels are going to be connected. We are going to have two rows of six panels. So six, and then right in front here, another six. So it's going to be 12 panels total. And using these bucket racks, so easy to install. It is, oh my gosh, so simple. So I started with the high spot right here. I'm going to go another two panels this way. Um, but all I did was just throw some boulders I had on the property inside there, probably about 150 pounds in it. Same thing here, about 150 pounds in there. And then I'll do another panel from here, straddling it, going over. And it doesn't have to be perfectly level, but it does need to be kind of a straight line. So that's why I have this bucket of gravel and I'm putting whatever gravel I need to just get it close enough to where there's not stress. And you'll feel it when you install these things. If it's stressing the bucket or the panel, you'll feel it. And you just add a little bit of rocks here or there and make sure you take that stress off it. And if you have larger size panels like I do here, which are pushing the max size, you have these little addition clips you can kind of throw on there and it extends it. And they are gonna be coming out with, I think 43 inches is the widest you can go with with these bucket racks, these ballast style racks from Powerfield Energy. Uh, they are making in process of making a bigger one to fit bigger panels. I think 450 watts are about the max. Now these are bifacial, which I don't know how much really addition I'm going to get because a lot of the panel is shaded or blocked underneath here. But there's a little. I mean, maybe if I put white rocks down there, maybe I get a little bit more of a boost from the bifacial underneath there. But I'm not expecting it. But these panels are still so ridiculously inexpensive. I think they're like. I don't know, 38, 40 cents a watt. And I'll leave a link to where I got them, but the place where I buy them at, as long as you buy them in at least groups of 10, you're gonna get a really good price. So I'll leave a link in the description of this video on that. <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing. I started with the high end, the highest of the area. That way I can build up from there on the other ones with gravel. That's what I did here. I'll end up putting a little bit more gravel underneath this one. Another panel across, another panel across. There's a little sections for the wire right here. So you can just slide the wire over. And I'm gonna be doing a series, two strings in series. I think it's gonna be a total of around, I don't know, 280 volts each string and about 11 amps or so. So ideally this is a two person job, but I mean, I'm gonna show you here. It can be done with one person, but if you can have a partner, sure would make things easier.
And again, these ballast style racks, they don't need to be drilled into the ground. All you do is fill them with weight. And uh, they'll give you the exact weight you need to hit permitting if you need it. And that's way overkill in my opinion what they're asking for. But if you need permitting, you can. I'm in an area of a county or in a county that as long as you're doing ground mount, they don't require any permits or anything. So um, every county is different, every city is different. So you have to check with your city or your municipality. So I got three panels up. <clears throat> One thing about these large panels though, uh, the positive and negative cable aren't long enough to reach each other. So I've got to get little pigtails basically. So I just ordered about a hundred bucks of those. So now let's get into ballpark costs on this project. So the solar panels, I've got 12 of them. It's going to be a total of about, I think right around 5,400 watts. And I got these solar panels for about 41 cents a watt. You can buy them right now and I'll leave a link to that. So it's about $2,300 for the solar panels. Now I have 14 of the ballast style solar panel racks. And those are about $86 each. So I believe that comes out to right around $1,200. Then the EG4 6000 XP inverter is $1,399. And the indoor wall mount 14.3 kilowatt hour 48 volt battery I'm going to be using. It's EMP protected as well. That is running about $3,300 right now. And there's going to be another $500 probably in miscellaneous, a little small, little small sub panel, maybe a transfer switch. That should all add up to less than $500. There'll be some wiring, a little bit of conduit. I'm guessing around $500 for that. So all in, I'm going to be at right under $9,000 roughly. Now this system is oversized, as I mentioned. I'm going to have it run my other pressure pump as well. So if you did this style system, you're going to have extra power. I mean, I'm even thinking about running the transfer switch to... A panel I have right next to me here that actually feeds another house where I could just switch over and power the house off it for a while if I wanted to in the event of a grid outage situation. So this is, system's a little bit of an overkill, but if you installed this system on your well, I think you'd be extremely happy with the performance. So in the second video, I'll be finishing up the install of the solar panels. I'll start to put the conduit in the ground to wire the solar panels over to the inverter, and we'll start getting the inverter hung and get that battery moved in. So Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I release that video, which should be in the next two weeks. Thanks, everyone.